Marvel Strike Force fans, I'm Cerebro, your community manager, and welcome to your community update. In our next chapter, I'm covering the Supernatural team. Last week, we talked about Ghost Rider. Be sure to go check that video out. And this week, we're talking about the next new character for the team, Elsa Bloodstone. Let's do a breakdown of her abilities. Her basic is bloody good guns. Attack the primary target for piercing, plus bonus attack five times for piercing. Her special is Trick Shot. It has an energy cost of five and starts at two. Attack the primary target for damage. Attack the most injured enemy for damage, ignoring taunt and stealth. Her ultimate is Scatter Guns. It has an energy cost of six and starts at six. Gain offense up for two turns. Attack the primary target and adjacent targets for damage per supernatural ally. Her passive is, well, you can see. On a miss or ally miss, if this character has three or more supernatural allies, attack that target for damage. On enemy dodge, attack that enemy for damage. Gain crit chance. Mystic allies gain crit chance. Gain accuracy per supernatural ally. In addition, the other existing characters in the supernatural team have had some minor alterations made to their kit to beef them up a little bit for the supernaturals. For Doctor Strange, his ultimate, Book of Vishanti, now also revives a supernatural ally. His passive is Master of the Arcane Arts. If this character has three or more supernatural allies, heal and gain deflect when an enemy gains a positive effect. For Mordo, there was a change to his passive, Too Many Sorcerers. The ability now also heals the most injured supernatural ally on any character death. On death of a mystic, he now also heals the most injured supernatural ally and grants ability energy to self and that ally. And finally, Scarlet Witch had an addition to her ultimate Chaos Wave. If the character has four or more supernatural allies, apply defense down to all enemies. Elsa Bloodstone's going to have her own special event called the Bloodstone Files, in which you will need to use characters with the special limited time trick or treat trait in order to participate in the event. Completing the nodes will reward you with shards for the Hunter Squad Orb, and will have a chance to drop shards of Elsa Bloodstone at an increased drop rate. Next, be on the lookout for the Highway to Halloween Gold event, which will have an increased drop rate of gold by 66.6%. Six, six, six. Where have I heard that number before? Speaking of the deceased, clawing at the heels of Highway to Halloween is the celebrated spirit's milestones, where you can earn character shards and orange and purple gear raid orbs. Coordinate with your alliance to hit milestones that reset every day for five days. There are going to be new character combinations required each day, so be sure you log in every day to find out which characters to use. And finally, who doesn't love more gold? Why, of course you do. The Payday event is coming back yet again, so make sure that you have your mercenaries leveled up to a decent star level. That way you can just rake in all that delicious gold. Gimme, 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 gimme. I wonder if I can trade any of that gold for candy. All right, guys, I am here with Mike Lego. And Mike, what do you do on the Marvel Strike Force team? Well, I am a senior animator on Marvel Strike Force. Mostly just animation, but right now the animation team is uh, actually responsible for rigging and skinning. As I'm sure our players have noticed, uh, we have a lot of animations yeah. in the game. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I noticed personally uh, with our uh, one of our latest characters, Ghost Rider, there's a lot of animations. Yeah, there's a lot of animations. <laughs> He's got a lot, um, especially with you know having a motorcycle and a whip chain. It was it was a lot to do in a short amount of time. Yeah, I, I think that's the really the first time we've had a character that really kind of like rides yes. something. Like, yeah. did that present any particular challenges? Yeah, <laughs> it was really challenging. The animation team normally were just responsible for posing. Like mm -hmm. literally, I'm a, I'm a poser. Yeah. So all I do is basically just you know every every few frames we mm -hmm. set keyframes, um, but now we're kind of responsible for setting up the skeletons and assigning vertices to bones, mm -hmm. and that takes up a little bit of time. And also with the whole setup of the motorcycle, you know, I've never really set anything like that up, like the mechanics of it with the shocks and everything. Um, just going through that and making sure it worked as a prop. So yeah. it's essentially like a weapon that gets attached to his hips. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was weird. It sounded like that was kind of some firsts for you there. Yeah, yeah. first for the team too. Like it wasn't just hard on the animation side, um, the integrators as well. Mm -hmm. There are so many places it can go wrong, especially when it comes to props and stuff. A lot of things did go wrong. <laughs> what advice would you be would you give to any um, artists out there that are looking to get into the video game industry? Well, um, so one thing that you might not hear a lot. It, besides getting better at art is actually like networking and making real friends like go out there and you know hit up your favorite artists on Instagram or social media mm -hmm. they're much more attainable now than when I was growing up and you know handing off my VHS tapes to to strangers <laughs> yeah but really just try to uh, make real connections because a lot of the jobs you get in the industry because it's so small is through your friends and through your connections. So mm -hmm. you, you're you gonna wanna focus on being somebody that people wanna work with. So I see you brought something with you. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Could you tell us more about that? This is my ukulele. Uh, most... As that is the, pr the actual pronunciation. It is, I know. Everyone says ukulele, right? I, I say it all the time, okay. it's just because I'm on camera. <laughs> I wanna say it right, I wanna say it right, so yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. disappoint people like, hey, that's the wrong pronunciation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cool thing about this office is that I can go into meetings and just kinda like, softly strum, you know, I try not to be too offensive <laughs> with it, you know. I just try to keep like a nice chill background and luckily for me, people don't hate it. All right, Michael, thank you so much for stopping thank by. You, it was Nick. awesome to learn all it's about it. Please come by again here. sometime. I hope so. I hope I can. Thank yes. You. Awesome. For today's Community Spotlight, I would like to highlight a few comments that were left on the first episode of Strike Time. So please be sure to leave your comments below and we might use them for our next episode. The first comes from Legendary99 that says, we want to see you guys talking about future content on this channel more. It says his, but I think he means this. Uh, yeah, that's actually one thing we definitely want to do. So obviously this is our second episode. We're kind of getting things spun up here, but the idea is that we will get even more developers in here that will be talking about some of the new things that they're working on and give you guys some advance notice so that way you guys can prepare. So yeah, the answer to that is coming soon. This comment comes from Skuldron that says, I want to do the school mission. Yes, I believe he's referring to Sebastian's letter in which he sent us that really cool mission that he designed with the Brotherhood. And uh, who knows, maybe that will come someday. I have no idea, but I'm going to be pushing for it. And our third comment comes from Kid in Class that says, I actually enjoyed Strike Time. Awesome, glad you like it. Any way to make this weekly or bi-weekly. Yes, actually our plan is at the start here, we're going to do this uh, bi-weekly, meaning every other week or every fortnight. Um, but as time goes on and as we get a good kind of feel and rhythm for the show, um, we might be able to increase the frequency. But for starters, it's going to be about every two weeks. Thank you guys so much for watching Strike Time. Be sure to like and subscribe because we're going to be doing this every couple of weeks. Have a super happy and safe Halloween out there, and we'll see you next time. All right, now where's my candy?